But the things they didn't do, the risks they never took, the dreams they didn't pursue. I ask you, will your last words be, if only I hit Hey, you, wake up. Why do you exist? Life is not meant to simply work, wait for the weekend and pay rent. No, no, I don't know much, but I know this. Every person on this earth has a gift. And I apologize to the black community, but I can no longer pretend. Martin Luther King, that man never had a dream. That dream had him. See, people don't choose dreams. Dreams choose them. So the question I'm getting to is do you have the courage to grab the dream that picked you, that befits you and grips you, or will you let it get away and slip through? You know, I learned a fact about airplanes the other day. Now this was, this was so surprising, see? I was talking to a pilot and he told me that many of his passengers think planes are dangerous to fly in. But he said, actually, it is a lot more dangerous for a plane to stay on the ground. <laughs> I said, what? Like, how does that sound? Well, he said, he said, because on the ground, the plane starts to rust, malfunction and wear, yeah. much faster than it ever would. It was in the air. As I walked away, I thought, yeah, makes total sense. Because planes were built to live in the skies. And every person was built to live out the dream they have inside. So it is perhaps the saddest loss to live a life on the ground without ever taking off. See, most of us are afraid of the deep. So how powerful is that video? Absolutely. So that title Woo. of that video is actually called Everybody Dies, But Not Everybody Lives. So I ask you, are you just dying right now? Or are you actually living? What person will you choose to be? The one that just died like the rest of us? Or the one that actually lived? Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, says that the main difference, the primary difference between rich people and poor people is how we spend our time. I think that the difference in everything is how we spend our time. Successful people, unsuccessful people, healthy people, unhealthy people. Whether you have strong relationships, weak relationships, it's all in how you spend your time. You see, we all have 86,400 seconds in a day, but once they're gone, they're gone. Time doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're famous. Look at Steve Jobs. He was worth $10 billion when he died at the age of 56. Can you imagine working so hard and being one of the most greatest, most brilliant minds of all time and being worth $10 billion and you still couldn't save yourself? Because time doesn't care. We're all the same. <coughs> your life, your results, personally and professionally, are a direct reflection of what you do with your time. Don't send them to me. There's a little bit of a paradigm shift here. We've been talking about paradigms a lot. I don't want you to spend your time or think about how you're spending your time. Think about how you can invest your time. When you spend money, you don't get it back. When you invest your money, you increase your probability of an additional return. So as you're going throughout the day, when you're doing your activities, when you're in meetings, ask yourself, am I spending my time right now or am I investing it? That's strong. So what's the difference? If what you're doing isn't going to take your mission forward, the organization's mission forward, help you achieve your personal and professional goals, you're spending your time. But if it does, then you're investing it. I believe time is king. I believe that it's more valuable than any 
any product that you can have at the dealership. Now you might say, no, you know, the opportunity to do businesses. But if you don't spend your time correctly with those opportunities, you're not going to sell that vehicle. You're not going to maximize it. Some may say, no, it's CRM. But I think we'd all agree, Sean would agree. If you don't spend your time appropriately in the CRM, garbage in, garbage out. So it's all about time. Sometimes when I'm doing consulting for dealers, I hear them say, well, instead of working eight hours, now I work 10 hours to get it all done. But that's not the key, guys. It's not about working more hours. It's about <coughs> working smarter, not harder. That's why we have people like Ali Rada that sell you know, 202 units, this is highest, in one month. Yeah, the days. average salesperson sells 9.6 units. It's about using your time more effectively. You see, we all have enough time. It's just hidden in the time that we're wasting. We have to make sure that the less we do means more. Here's some stats about the workforce. So 80.4% of all people admit to wasting at least some sort of time in the workplace. Now, what scares me is it says admits. Probably at least 90%, right? About one in five automotive professionals waste at least a third of their entire day. If you're working eight hours, that's 2.6 hours a day. If you're working a 12-hour day, a bell to bell, that's four hours. Rob, you have 100 something employees. Imagine how much time if you add that all up. $37 billion is the cost to US businesses for useless meetings. Anybody been in a meeting that they felt like they shouldn't have been in? I have. Sorry. <laughs> 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 And disengaged employees cost U.S. businesses 450 to 550 billion dollars per year in lost productivity. Who here agrees with me that time is our most precious commodity? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I pretty much see every single hand in the room. And every time I do this presentation, I ask the same question just to kind of see where everyone's heads are. And everyone raises their hands, yet it's the most precious commodity, we agree to that, but it's also the most abused opportunity. So why is that? I'm sure there's plenty of reasons why, but I believe in these top three. One, some people will just have no desire, honestly. That's probably the people that shouldn't be at the dealership. They don't want it. They don't want to use their time appropriately. They want to waste time. They just want to clock in, clock out, and be done. Two, they don't possess the necessary time maximization skills. Most people don't. Think about it. When you're in school, you learn math, you learn science. You even learn how to sew and cook and babysit. But are they teaching time management organization skills? Nope. Not at my school. So if you're assuming that your people automatically possess these skills and then you're upset with their results, you need to take a look. How are they spending their time? Are they doing the activities that are pushing the organization's mission forward? Do they understand what the mission is? Do they understand where they should be spending their time? They might think they're spending their time in the right places. But without guidance, they may not know. And then we just blame them for the results. And three, it's because most people honestly don't understand the true value of time. When we were young, has anybody wished here you're maybe like, I don't know, 12, 13, oh, I can't wait till I'm 18. I did. Oh, I can't wait to be an adult, have an adult life. I did. But I would go back if I could. But people don't realize it until it's too late when we're on our deathbeds. 
There was a hospice nurse, and they actually mentioned the study in the video. She conducted an interview with her, her clients. She basically took care of the dying and uh, asked them, you know, what were the top regrets that you had in life? And here's three that I chose of the five. So they didn't pursue their dreams. So will your dreams die with you? They worked too much and they didn't spend enough time with family. Which in the car business, that's common, right? <laughs> and they didn't spend enough time with friends. So who here is done? Who feels like if they woke up tomorrow, they would be okay? They're like, I'm ready to go. Time to go. <laughs> I know not me. Oh, hell no, you know, not me either. I'm not ready to leave my kids. I don't feel like my career is exactly, you know, that I've done everything that I could possibly do. I don't feel like I left my mark on this world yet. So how do you increase your chances of not dying with regret? One, have passion in everything you do. Anything worth doing should be worth doing. Don't do it half butt. Have passion behind it. Have passion behind what you're doing on a daily basis. Make it count. Live with purpose. Know why you feel like you exist. Know what motivates you. Why do you wake up each day? Why do you go to work each day? Spend your time in the right places, on the right things. And we're going to talk about the time matrix in a couple minutes, which will help with that. And also, live life by design. Stop walking into the dealership, allowing the day to take you wherever it goes. That's living by default. We want to live by clear, conscious design. So the time matrix, this is actually a Franklin Covey thing. This is what you can use to filter through your activities to know and understand which quadrant you're spending your time in. This way you know what to do with it based on which quadrant it falls into. So it's composed of four quadrants, quadrants one, two, three, and four. Quadrant one is known as the quadrant of necessity. This is composed of those things that are both urgent and important. That would be like an angry customer, <coughs> lost keys, your babysitter's sick and you have no childcare for the day. Those are quadrant one things. And it's known as the quadrant of necessity because these things are going to happen to you regardless. Quadrant three in the lower left-hand corner is known as the quadrant of distraction. This is where the distractions disguise as opportunities comes into play. These are composed of those activities that are urgent, but they're not important. They're urgent because they're requiring your immediate attention. They're urgent because you're getting called into a meeting that maybe you shouldn't be in, but that's an urgent matter, so you go. But it's not necessarily important. Quadrant four, in the lower right-hand corner, is the quadrant of waste. This is composed of those activities that are neither important nor are they urgent. You want to stay out of this quadrant. <laughs> And quadrant two, in the upper right-hand corner, is known as the quadrant of productivity, of planning, preparation, organization. This is the quadrant that you want to try to spend the most of your time in. It's composed of those activities that are important, but they're not urgent. But this is the very reason why we end up pushing a lot of quadrant two stuff off, because it's not urgent at the moment. Going to the gym, for example, is a quadrant two activity. But it can quickly become a quadrant one activity if we don't take care of ourselves. And then we will end up in the quadrant of urgency. So what we want to do is completely eliminate as best as possible quadrants three and four. And I say you want to live above the line. So eliminate three and four and live in one and two. Now you might say, Karen, why do I want to live in quadrant one with all these crazy fires and 
you know, angry customers and whatnot. But remember, it's the quadrant of necessity. These are things that are going to happen regardless. But what you can do if you spend more time in quadrant two in planning and preparation, you'll have less of quadrant one. You'll have less angry customers. You'll have a plan in place if you have a bunch of staff callouts. So if you just look at those lines, you can just imagine that middle line will just be bumped over. You can use the time matrix language at the dealership. So if you learn this, if you make this a cultural thing, you can actually say, you know, Rob, you're walking down the hallway, Jason's like, oh, I gotta talk to you. And you're like, is it important? Oh, I got a Q1. You're gonna stop. All right, I know this is important, I gotta deal with this. Or do I need to come to this meeting? I'm actually spending time in Q2 right now. You know, that top one, the one that we wanna be in the planning, the preparation, 